One of the best parts of a Linux handheld, be it the Steam Deck or even something like the 351P, is the united front-end experience you get. It's one of the things people comment the most that they miss when it comes to an Android handheld or an x86 handheld. Luckily, if you have the ROG Ally or the Ally X, Armory Crate has your back. Right out of the box, Armory Crate does a pretty good job with PC games you've installed from all the usual suspects, like Steam, uh, Epic's on here somewhere, EA, even games I installed from Xbox Game Pass. They get detected seamlessly for the most part, and it's also easy to add loose executables, be they older games you've moved from PC to PC, like Alpha Centauri, or emulators like Dolphin or Citra. What's missing right out of the box though, is how to add emulated games themselves. The feature isn't really missing, it's just buried a little bit deeper than it has to be. So join me for a few minutes as I show you how to add individual games for Switch, PS3, and Xbox 360. These steps are repeatable for the most part for any of your standalone emulated games too. So if you have questions about emulators like Citra or Dolphin, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get all the written instructions up on our website. Our magic weapon in the fight for seamless front end are batch files. Now batch files are just text files with instructions and modifiers on how we want to launch an EXE. Armory Crate doesn't have the ability to process commands at the end of an executable path. If it did, we could just paste a line of text after each game and be done. So, we need to use batch files. They're super easy to do, and you can just copy and paste most of it. So don't worry, we'll have you up and running in a jiffy. First off is Switch. You're going to want to create a new text document in your Switch emulator folder and rename it as gameName.bat. You're also going to want to enable the view setting in Windows to let you change extensions or else this isn't going to work. So enable that and then once you rename your text file as filename.bat, so here we're doing unicornoverlord.bat, and delete the .txt extension, Windows will make sure you really want to do it. So you go full Russell Decor mode and say, affirmative fella. I would earnestly like to complete this process and click yes. Open your text file and type start and add one space. Then go to your emulator folder, right click on the exe and select copy as path. This copies the location of the exe file. You're gonna to wanna to paste that into your text file after start and the space, the space is important. It'll have quotes around it. So you're gonna to wanna to delete the quotation marks and add a space and then dash G this is going to let Windows know you're trying to use the EXE to open a specific file. In this case, your ROM. Next, you're going to go find your ROM, right click on it, and copy as path again. This is going to copy the path to your ROM file. Go back to the text file, add a space after that dash G, space is important, and paste the path to the ROM. Don't delete the quotes this time. They need to be in there. Save the text file, and then go into Armory Crate. In Armory Crate, hit the select button, which is like two squares, I always call it select. Hit the select button to go to manage library and then hit L or R to go into file explorer. You can't link directly to the batch file, so I always just select the exe file for the emulator and move on. Hit OK and then select the emulator and hit the X button to go to game options. Select game info and click edit in the top right corner of the screen. In the spot where it says launch CMD, just copy the path to your batch file. It should be the directory where the file is, and then file name, and then end in .bat. Change the game title to the title of your game, add the release date if you want to, and you can also download a box cover or other art and add it as the game art on this page. See? Pretty. Now you just hit done, and weirdly enough, you're done! Press B to go back, and you should see the entry for your game. Select the game and launch it to verify that it works. You might see that bat file flash for a second, but the game should load. Easy peasy. I have my M2 button on the back mapped to full screen, so I hit that and we're in the game. You can also add more text to the bat file to achieve the same result. Just add dash F before the dash G. This will be covered in the written guide as well. Next, we're gonna do PS3. This is almost the same process, except we're linking to the eboot.bin file in the ROM's PS3 game slash directory. That's how you say it. The steps are the same as before, except after the exe, we're going to type dash dash no dash gui, and then paste the path of the eboot bin file. 
The no GUI part just launches the game directly without opening the front end first. Literally means no GUI, no graphical user interface. Same as before, add the emulators.exe file to your library, change the path to the batch file we made, rename the game, add your lovely art, and then launch to verify it works. It'll build the cache, and this can take a minute on the very first time you launch a game, but then the game will open and run seamlessly. Again, I'm using M2 map to the full screen function button for this emulator. Finally, we're gonna show Xbox 360. Make your batch file the same as before, name it after the game, type in start, space, paste the exe path, remove the quotes, and then add the path to the ROM file with the quotes still on there. You don't need a dash G or no GUI or anything for this emulator. Save that, do the same as before on Armory Crate by adding Xenia as a new exe, replace the path with the batch file, rename it to your game name, add art, and then test. It should open seamlessly again, and you'll be set. Well, that's my short tutorial on how to add emulated games as their own distinct Armory Crate entries. What do you think? You think this is good enough? Or should Asus try to streamline the process a bit more in future updates? You don't want to make it too easy to put emulators on here, because then they might get in trouble. But you don't want to make it too difficult to where you can't do it at all. So maybe, maybe we're in a happy medium. What do you guys think? If you thought this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. We're grinding towards 100,000, and it would be pretty sweet to get a silver YouTube button for my living room. I'd really confuse the hell out of my friends and relatives, you know? Anyway, see you later. I'm going to go play uh, Unicorn Overlord.